welcome back everyone to another video a hey, this fucking level up okay so this is this is my wife right here skill success learn faster train like the fucking best and become extraordinary at anything all right chapter nine Let's get to it but before we get to it like subscribe comment down below what you want to watch give me suggestions anything anything helps i really appreciate it hey we're leveling up we, we are literally at three million fucking subscribers dog like god damn boy okay but for real man we're, we're fucking growing all right so just saying you can do anything in life it's just a fucking mindset is the fucking mindset. It split that word. Look, mindset. Of what frequency, of what level are you setting your mind at? That's it. That's, it comes down to that. Period. That's it, man. Period. Okay, peace out, man. Just kidding. Okay, this song's kind of like boring me, dog. <laughs> K K K, come on, come on, dude. Oh my god. Okay, I like I like this song. Build custom industrial machines in days. Okay. Anyways, let's get to it. Chapter nine. Elite level mindset shifts. Think like the world's fucking best. Change your thoughts and you change your world. See? Change your fucking thoughts and change the world. Okay, I, I, nah, not this one today. <laughs> okay. Change our thoughts. Change your thoughts and you change your whole fucking world. So, okay. By Norman Vincent Peale. Our mind's tremendously powerful. It's one of the greatest, if not the greatest, assets that we fucking have. Woo! But it's, but it's also much like a hammer. It could build your dream house. It could build you your dream house, or it could be used as a weapon to bash in somebody's skull. It's a tool in itself. It is not good or bad. That's dependent on how you use it. Damn, Daniel. And some people use their mind to develop tremendous levels of skill, achieve their ambitions, and live a fulfilled life. While others use their mind to be mediocre, fail to achieve their goals, and live with a lot, with lots, wait, with a lot of regrets. Damn. I know that's not popular to say, but it's just the most accurate version of the truth. However, as we briefly covered in the first section of this book, our thoughts are also often not our own. Damn. See, our thoughts are also often not our own. Many of the thoughts and beliefs that we have, we did not consciously choose, but rather were passed down to us by parents, grandparents, friends, teachers, and mentors, as well as, as, well as others we've interacted with on our life's journey. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna go hard, dog. And if your current beliefs that often are not your own got you to where you are today, good or bad, some new altered beliefs can take you to that next level of success. That's why this chapter is focused on the three core mindset shifts modeled of the world's best we can and should make if we want to become extraordinary, ex extraordinary at what we do. Number one, failure is a key to success. What? Failure is a fucking key to success. I don't want to make this video too long because I got I gotta I gotta go to work. This is not my main priority, but it's definitely one of the one of my assets, you know? It's paying me so. Okay, there's only one thing that makes a dream impossible to achieve. The fear of failure. The, there's only one thing that makes a dream impossible to achieve, the fucking fear of failure. Ooh. 
the fear of fucking failure, dude. What have you failed at this week? Ask yourself that. Those were the worst she would hear from her father on a regular basis. Often when they would be eating dinner, he would ask her, what, what have you failed at this week? And they would discuss her failures from that week. The same question over and over again. What have you failed at this week? She would tell him about her failures, but rather than get disappointed or disheartened, they would celebrate these failures. They viewed them as positives. As she grew up and got older, she started chasing her dreams. She wanted to be an attorney. She started studying, however, reconsidered very quickly about after scoring low on the LSATs, she failed. So she got a job at Disney World in Florida where she worked for the next three months. However, she wasn't happy with this job and wanted something more. What have you failed at this week? Next, in the pursuit of more, she accepted a job at an office supply company selling fax machines door to door. During this time, she had an idea for a product of her own. She started her own business, but the failures didn't stop. She had no business experience, business education, or a clue about how retail works. When she first presented her product and business idea, oh my fucking shit. What? Because I recently fucking deleted the premium. So I was like, fuck that, you know? I'm going to take care of my my finances. Okay, anyways, what have you felt at this week? But she kept going, pursuing her dreams. It skipped forward to 2014. She was listed the 93rd most powerful woman in the world by Forbes. Her name, Sarah Blakely, founder of Spanx. Spanx? Hang on. Her net worth as of 2017, over $1.7 billion. It's an interview, in, in an interview, she said, my dad growing up encouraged me and my brother to fail. The gift he was giving me is that failure is when you are not trying versus the outcome. When you are not trying versus the outcome. It's really, it, it's really allowed me, allowed me to be much freer in trying things and spreading my wings in life. Bam. In the words of Sarah Blakely, failure is the secret to success. And although, just like we talked about before, there is no number one secret, only factors that correlate to success strongly. However, just like Sarah Blakely's father helped her realize failure is an incredibly important factor in success, her father helped her re redefine her mindset around failure, and that's, in her own words, one of the biggest things that she attributes to her success to. Boom. And it allowed her to view and approach failure far more positively, which allowed her to test more, experiment more, learn more, and push through challenges easier. And if you go and study success in the world's highest achievers, you'll find this. You'll find this isn't the exception, but the rule. The vast majority of the world's highest skilled, highest achieving people view and approach failure far more effectively and positively than the majority of society. Damn, bruh. People view and approach failure far more effectively and positively than the majority of society. Failed so often, he became the best. I've missed more than 9,000 shots in my career. I've lost almost 300 games in 26 times. I've been trusted to take the game-winning shot and missed. I failed over and over again in my life, and that is why I succeeded. Those are the words of the basketball legend, Michael Jordan. In the famous Nike commercial, Failure. In 1978, 15-year-old Michael went went to sign up for his varsity basketball team. However, he he never made the team and was asked to play on the junior team instead. Later in his career, Michael, 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 Michael recalled the, that moment. I went to my room and I closed the door and I cried for a while. I couldn't stop. Even though there was no, no one else home at that time, I kept the door shut. It was important to me that no one hear me or see me. But Michael, just like Sarah Blakely, never let failure define him. He used his failure as... He uses failure as fuel and made him work harder and train harder until he got what he wanted. Woo! That's, that's me right there, dog. Woo! Oh, yeah, dog. Oh, ah. oh. And as you can see from that commercial trans, transcript, tri, tri, transcript, he doesn't view failure as a negative. He didn't view failure as something that stops him from his goals. But rather, he views failure as the very reason for his success. And it's a big factor that allowed him to become arguably the greatest basketball player of all time is because failure in itself is a huge key to success. 
literally a huge key to success failure and why everybody fail failures and and while everybody everybody failures the fuck and while everybody failures that's inevitable the only people who don't fail are those who never do anything it's those who react to failure most effectively that thrive the world's highest highest achievers know that failure is simply a stepping stone to success as well as something they can learn from to become better at what they do and beyond that history tends to cover the failures and emphasize the successes Michael Jordan may have scored more than, more game game winning points than anyone else, but he also missed more last minute shots than any other player. Yet, do you ever blame him, blame him or even talk about the failed last minute shots? Those failures get wiped away through history, and icons get remembered for their successes. Fail often. In his book Bounce, Matthew Side talks about a study conducted in the sport of figure skating back in the 1990s. They found that one of the biggest differences between elite skaters and their less skilled counterparts was simply how frequently they failed in training. They discovered that quite simply, elite skaters fell over far more often during their training sessions. There's gonna be an ad, I bet, look. Oh no. They discovered that quite simply, elite skaters fell over far more than during their training sessions. Which now makes perfect sense is because each failure is an opportunity for learning. Each failure is an opportunity for learning. And it's why failure shouldn't be avoided. It should be encouraged. Damn. Failure should be encouraged. It shouldn't be avoided. Failure should be applauded. It should be celebrated. It should be encouraged because failure at its core, it's not only a sign, it's, it's not only a sign someone is going for it and taking action, but it's a stepping stone to success in itself. Imagine how different society and life would be if we if we were all throughout life encouraged to go for it, take action, fail often, learn from failure, and view failure as a stepping stone. We would not just we would we would see not just a radical improvement in skill level, but also a massive increase in human happiness. By avoiding failure, we're avoiding the opportunity to learn and get better. It's why we must challenge ourselves to view failure as a positive in our lives. As something that supports us to get to to get to where we want to go on our journey fail fast beyond just beyond just failing often we should strive to fail fast ooh, 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 ooh. especially we were learning something for the first time it's because when we learn something new something we haven't yet failed at before a part of our mind is actually holding us back from from our full learning potential See, it's because when we learn something new, something we haven't yet failed at before, a part of our mind is actually holding us back from our full learning potential. It's because when we've never experienced failure in a particular topic or skill, our mind begins to overemphasize and over-exaggerate the worst case scenario in our heads. The greatest, the greatest experience of this comes from a skiing trip in France during which I was teaching my grandma to ski at first she was terrified in fact you can see the fear of falling written all over her face she wanted to learn but fear was taking up so much of her focus and, and attention that all she was doing was getting increasingly frustrated because she hadn't fallen before her mind was overemphasizing how bad and painful falling over would be if she, it would be and it was stopping her from learning and maybe you've experienced this before where you want to learn, but most of your attention and focus isn't spent on learning, but rather on avoiding failure. I assure, I sure can relate. And as to how you, as to how you get through that, you simply fail fast, which means if you have to fail on purpose, go ahead. Ooh, I'm sorry. And that's exactly what I did on the skiing trip. I went and pushed her over on purpose, safely, of course just to help her remove that fear of failure and an action that may sound e evil without context, but an action that allowed her to experience what I call that, what I call the, the, that wasn't so bad effect. That wasn't so bad effect. This is based on the understanding that fear is much worse in our heads than it is in real life. Perhaps you've experienced this effect before where you were scared or terrified about, about something only to later say to yourself, oh, that wasn't as bad as I thought it would be. Fuck yeah, dude, that's so true. So if you've ever paralyzed or limited by fear, free yourself by stepping into that fear on purpose if you have to, instead of avoiding it. 
failing fast is a strategy we can use to remove ourselves from a state of being paralyzed by failure and begin to step back into a more focused learning. Don't let failure define you. He had produced about 2010 to 200, 2000 and 2100 works, and including around 900 paintings and 1100 drawings and sketches in his lifetime. During the, that lifetime, he had sold just one painting. That's it. There's going to be an ad. Oh, there's no ad? Fuck yeah, dude. He committed suicide at age 37, following years of mental illness and poverty. Vincent Van Gogh was considered a failure during his life. He became famous only after his death, and today, today is regarded as a misunderstood artistic genius. Unfortunately, he wasn't able to see the legacy he left, but odds are, if he did, he wouldn't consider himself as a failure, but rather a huge fucking success, just like he is viewed among society today. What do you think he would have said if he saw the legacy that he has had since his death? How do you think he would have viewed his life if he saw what, he see, what we see today? Van Gogh was an extraordinary artist, but made the fatal mistake of learning, of letting failure define him. He let his current reality de define who he was, which amongst other reasons caused him to suffer emotionally despite his amazing skill. And what we can learn from this very abridged, rather tragic story of Vincent Van Gogh is not to make the same mistake and let our failures define us. He had. He had created over 2,100 works of art before the age of 37, with many of those paintings later seen selling for millions and tens of millions of dollars. Imagine how much more he could have created and contributed if he never let failure define him, but rather viewed it as positively. Positively, this is one of the this is one of those rare instances in which we are not modeling the behaviors of a successful person but rather learning from their mistakes. Michael Jordan, Sarah Blakely, and other high achievers never let failure define them and went on and not only to become extraordinary, but also to live lives filled with happiness. I was checking if the fucking phone was turned off. Damn. We mustn't let our past shape or how we view ourselves because we don't know what the future holds. If only Van, Van Gogh did this, it would be fascinating to see how he would interact and inspire the world today. We must view failure positively and have faith in the future we're creating instead of letting short-term failure stop us. <whistles> Fall in love with failure, dude. Fall in love with failure. <whistles> That's the most fucking extraordinary advice. Fall in love with failure. Fail fast. Don't let failure define you. Fail often. That's that's only fully achieved when we not just tolerate failure, but rather learn to fall in love with it. <whistles> Exercise, falling in love with failure. Every day for the next seven days before you go to bed, write out a list of things you have failed at that day. Just list a few things, no matter how small they may be. And after you finish your list for that day, stand up and celebrate. Go crazy, go nuts, just celebrate like a maniac. And then sit down for two minutes and think about how each failure served you. What did you learn? How? What problem could it have helped you avoid? How did it help you? Oh, son. This, this, exercise is, this exercise is designed to recondition your thoughts about failure and enable you to associate each failure as a positive event. Just like Sarah Blakely, you can condition yourself to love failure and achieve whatever you want. Challenge yourself to do this exercise for the next seven days. Approach learning in, li in a life in general, knowing that when you fall in love with failure, nothing can stop you from, ach from achievement. When you fall in love with failure, nothing can stop you from fucking achievements. It's time for all to collectively step up into higher levels of thinking, to fall in love with failure, to celebrate failure, to view failure as a positive and use each failure as a stepping stone to greater learning and skill and success. It's time for us to not just know this, but to live it in our lives. Not to, not, not, not to just know it, but fucking live it in our lives. When we do this, not only will we, will we be, live happier lives, but we'll also step into greater levels of our true potential. All right, I'm going to leave it at there. 
I'm gonna leave it out there. So, we'll see you on the next video. After the next video, after this one. That makes sense because I'm gonna post my daily reflection when you have after this one. Damage, what the hell is this? Choose safe flight. Choose safe flight. Okay, anyways, guys, the next part is feedback is fuel for growth. This chapter was fucking amazing. My takeaways is just fall in love with failure. Fail fast. Face a motherfucking failure. Literally, if, don't avoid it, but become obsessed with it. Like, just, like, like I said right here, where, where was it? Don't let failure define you, you know? Yeah, it shouldn't be avoided. It should be encouraged. Just have the fucking courage to face what scares you. Don't 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 be afraid. You're going to learn something from it. Why would you want to be afraid of growing? You know? So that's the that's my takeaways. I hope you like that little chapter right there. We're still in chapter 9, I believe. So I love you all. Fucking fail fast. Don't Avoid failure. Fucking face that shit. Learn from it. Ask yourself questions about it. So, I love y'all. Wake the fuck up, baby.